<laughs> Hi. So welcome Hello. to the 2022 Latinx Kid Lit Book Festival. Um, I'm Eliza Kinks. I'm a Tejana author, illustrator. So you have to look up as I'm thinking of all the names, right? <laughs> um, I used to actually be in TV animation, but I switched to illustrating children's books when I discovered my own kids' books because I loved them so much. Recently, I was awarded the James Marshall Fellowship, and my most recent book out is actually up here, Goldie's Guide to Grandchilding. Um, and I want to refer everybody to the to please read our anti-harassment policy in the chat box because otherwise you're gonna have to deal with us <laughs> <laughs> um and oh i got this fill out i'm not good at these yet uh, okay and uh don't forget to subscribe to the latinx kid lit book festivals YouTube channel. <laughs> Can you believe I got that all out? And if you are a school classroom librarian or educator joining us, please enter our classroom book set giveaway. You can find the link. Oh my goodness, this thing wants to keep falling out. I think it's my hair. <laughs> you can find the link to the entry form in the chat. Okay, and now I'm gonna start introducing our awesome panelists. So I'm gonna go just how I see the screen laid out. Um, Joe um, Jo Sapita was born and raised in East LA, a proud Angelino, <laughs> and received his BFA in illustration from Long Beach State. Only months from leaving school, Joe got a book contract after his first meeting with a publisher, and he's been illustrating books ever since. Joe is the award-winning illustrator of more than 30 books for children, and his latest is or is your latest, which one is your latest, Joe? Um, well, two came out, Rafa Kansan Papa, which I wrote, and Lupe Lopez, uh, Rockstar Rules are the most recent. Oh, awesome. Um, and okay, uh, then I'll go to Pablo. Pablo Leon is an author illustrator from Guatemala, currently living in Los Angeles and jumping between TV animation and comics. His original comic, The Journey, about true stories of people migrating from Central America to the US, was a 2019 Eisner Award nominee. And he is the, currently the illustrator for the exciting Mike Morales Shockwaves graphic novel. And do you have uh, anything else, Pablo, right now? Or? Uh, yeah, we have the next Miles uh, Morales book coming out next month. Uh, number oh. first. Oh, nice. And yeah, yeah. And I have a, my own author illustrator book coming up, but that's like 2024. So that's very far away. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I know. Publishing is such a such a long game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I had it on things. OK. And then Caroline, Carolyn De Flores is the author illustrator of over 14 books for children, including the picture book, The Amazing Watercolor Fish, and the short story, How to Exist in a City of Ghosts, in the book, Living Beyond Borders, Growing Up Mexican in America. Additionally, Carolyn has a YouTube channel for kids as it's working on a YA novel called Lineage about her two 12th great grand grandmothers. Right. Hey, Carolyn, how are you doing this morning? Hi. Well, the two, two 12th great grandparents are uh, my uh, 12th great grandmother, uh, Ana de Cavalleria de Estrada, who is the granddaughter of, uh, of King Ferdinand II. And the other um, 12th great grandmother is Leonor Cortez Montezuma, who is the uh, granddaughter of Montezuma II. So, uh, and basically, that's almost everybody, that's every Hispanic in the world. unique to me. But it's it's a really great um, YA uh, root version uh, origin story of, of the, our people in, in the Americas, and I'm really excited about it. But because of that, I've done some books as, as an author, but I haven't done as many picture books lately. I do have right here, and I took it out when you called my amazing watercolor fit, which I really love. And this was the first uh -huh. book traditionally published to ever be um, uh, 
to ever rhyme in both Spanish and English in his first publishing. So this is, it was a big deal for me. So there you go. Awesome. Well, let's just get to drawing because I know that's what the kids want to see. And <laughs> that's where we are. That's where us illustrators are. That's where we are in our element. So I will start off with a prompt. And then please feel free to chime in on the chat if you have ideas for us to draw, because we would love to hear them. Um, so let's see, for starting off, I always have to go with food in the morning because I'm so hungry. <laughs> like, I, I think I have three breakfasts before the day goes by. But draw, what is one of your favorite breakfasts? Is it a, is it a muffin? Is it a concha? Is it a taco? But it has to be a character. A character? The food? Yeah, food character. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is always so terrifying drawing in front of people. And, I know. It's like you it's feel like you have done. to start off with the perfect mark, right? Right. Or everybody's yeah. going to be judging you. Um, I'm the least food person you will ever meet in your life. I what? Mean, I'm not a, no, what? I'm not a food person at all. So oh, my I goodness. Even think what I mean. <laughs> when was the last time uh, you ate? Yeah, um, no. So, I, I, and while we're talking, I'm going to start calling on you guys to, um, while we're drawing, to ask some questions. So, uh, my first question, I'm going to go with you, Carolyn, is, yeah. did you draw as a kid? Are you? I drew the moment I was, you know, <laughs> born, I, th I think I was drawing. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I want to draw. Sure, of course. I mean, why? Why not? I, I, uh, it's it's play, you know. And uh, my specialty actually is in in what's called making marks. I mean, I, oh. I study marks. I've got some credentials as a literary paleontologist because people, oh. unless, unless they make marks, unless they do do things uh, to uh, to oh, um, I just realized I should write, this. then um, then they just disappear. And it's really important to see all the things that our cultures have written and read them in their original form. You know what I mean? That's all. Oh, definitely. Yeah. What about you, Pablo? Did you draw as a kid? And what did you like to draw if you did? Oh, man. Uh, not quite as much. I think I wanted to be a musician when I was little. And then that didn't work out because I wasn't good at it. Uh, I. I think when I finally did pick it up, uh, I was very much into this game that came out at the time, uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. It's like Super Nintendo. And Whoa. <laughs> I would just draw a lot of, and I would just draw the same thing too. It was never like anything different. So. <laughs> Oh man, I love that. Don't you love it? Like the stories you start telling when you're a kid with your favorite animations. Like I would draw like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like maybe us getting married. I, I don't want to talk about that actually. <laughs> um, the uh, And then Joe, what about yeah. you? What did you draw as a kid or did you draw? Or you want to be something else? No, I did, I did draw, though I did, um get away from it. Um, I eventually went to college actually to be an engineer. Thought I was going to be an aerospace engineer. Uh, but when I was young, I did draw a lot. Um, but I'm going to age myself. I drew things like choppers, you know, because oh. I'm an old guy. I love drawing choppers and dragsters and things like that. Um, and just pretty much, you know, what dinosaurs, everything, you know, kids like to draw. Oh, yeah. But I definitely drew. I know. I love, I can't get enough of kids drawings. My kids, I have uh, two kids right now that are uh, seven and nine, and I'm just always constantly jealous of the stuff that they come up with. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, okay. And then let's go. Oh, so how much longer do you guys think you're finishing up? You guys ready to show our first round of drawings? I'm finished. Okay, I'll give about out. 10 more seconds to finish it up. Oh, or oh, was that oh. enough? Or should I be uh, one more minute? <laughs> I can't wait to see what everybody's doing. 
this is not. Okay. So I drew, I'll go off first. So I drew uh, like breakfast taco, like dancing. <laughs> yeah, <that's> nice. <laughs> uh, and then what did you draw, Pablo? Uh, I'm a very simple person. I like uh, a bagel and bagel egg and cheese. Oh, can I see it? Mm. Oh yeah! Oh, I can okay. see it right there. Yeah. All right, bagel oh, and cheese with cute. really buff legs. You know, I don't know. <laughs> the I healthy know, bagel. Yeah, it, buff, it doesn't right? skip leg day. It doesn't skip leg day. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what about you, Joe? Um, I I'm a big fan of pancakes with a couple of fried <laughs> eggs on top. So oh, I didn't know how to make that into a character, so I just made it into a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, That's, that would be a very like. Wouldn't that be good if you wore your breakfast on your head? Actually, yeah. <laughs> and everybody awesome. would see like what you're getting. <laughs> oh, and then Carolyn, what did you draw? You know, I have. I'm I'm really into VR right now, and so uh -huh. I can go like to uh and and, and do uh, like Mayan cooking, and and it it all comes together. And so when I think of food, I think of the whole thing. So this is this is the actual you know, the, the wood fire underneath, you know, in, in maybe a thousand years ago and, and the, you know, the pottery and, and everything together. Oh, I yeah, can't really right. think of something individually. So your breakfast yeah, looks yeah. so beautiful. I want to like, <laughs> I want to yeah, go you, there. You see that, like, you see that the, the kitchen of water is talking. Since ah. you said I have to make something after we have a, have a personality. <laughs> there you go. They're a, they're a family. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take actually a prompt. We're getting uh, some uh, ask from the audience, which I knew we would once we started drawing. It's like only takes, I'm seeing us drawing for a second. Okay, so we got requests for Spider-Man and a car. <laughs> Just the two, two very easy things to start the day off with, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do um, not know superheroes, so I'm not sure what Spider-Man is. I don't either. Right. So I guess let's, why don't we all draw our own versions of Spider-Man? Okay. All right. <laughs> it well, could be you? whatever Spider-Man you want it to be. And a, and a car? Is yeah, it? and a car. Wow. So okay, um, whatever Spider-Man we wanted. Ah, I know. Oh, I know. yeah. Okay. So good. I love that request. <laughs> um, so... Um, let's see, I'll start off with Carolyn. Carolyn, so how did yeah. you become an illustrator? Wow, I think when I was seven years old, I did a book called, I was looking at it yesterday, A Trip Through Space Air. Um, and it was a, a book that I did when I was seven. And I um, actually made a hardcover for it and a, um, a what is it called? A, um, a story. And I absolutely loved it. And, um, and so um, trying to kind of draw at the same time. So here we go. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, don't worry. It. That's how I started. I started when I was, I was seven years old and I did a book. And uh, I still love that book today, you know? So, um, so that is uh, how I started. I'm sorry, I'm probably not doing that. Oh, no, it's... I think that's one of the hardest things is drawing and like talking at the same time, especially when you're trying to tell something. <laughs> so, um, so my favorite is this guy. He's like so awesome. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, what about you, Pablo? How did you become an illustrator? Oof. Um, so I initially went to school for animation and uh that's, that was kind of like where I started in. Uh, and I did end up initially at a studio in Atlanta. So uh, that was like sort of where I got my beginnings. Uh, while I was there, I was kind of frustrated with the, with the way things are run. Uh, oh, yeah. So, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. So I started just kind of just doing my own things. Uh, so, but really, I, I think it was just like a seamless transition, basically. Like, 
from there on. Oh, that's awesome. The uh, yeah, I, I started out too in animation, and uh, it just it wasn't for me. But I felt like I got, I came to it because of the storytelling aspect, you know, like at school. But then it sort of disappeared once you got into a studio. At least my experience yeah. with it. But I mean, but it's also I have a lot of friends in it that love it. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and I still do it. It's it's, yeah. it's still it's still my day job. Uh, mm -hmm. I I just feel more comfortable doing you know comics or stuff like that because um, I feel like I came to my own and I can tell my own stories without so much like uh, red tape. Oh brain. yeah, exactly. It's just like you in there. Yeah, I totally get that. Oh, then. Uh, Joe, what about you? How did you become an illustrator or well, realize you um, wanted to do it? After my serpentine route through college, um, I found myself wanting to make pictures. Actually, I was doing editorial cartooning. Um, uh, so I thought illustration was going to be the best place to sort of re-educate myself or educate myself in that regard. And when I got done, I really thought I was going to be an editorial illustrator. And I did do that for a long time um, with magazines and such. But um, uh, I was already older and, you know, I just wanted work in general. So uh, soon after I left school, I just took a trip to New York and showed my portfolio around town and Kind of like what you said in my bio, uh, an editor saw my stuff and gave me a book uh, deal pretty much after my first meeting. So, uh, yeah, I know it's an atypical story, um, and I just started getting books right after that. I, I had no clue how to illustrate a children's book at all um, <laughs> when I got that offer. I didn't even know how to make a dummy or anything like that, but, uh, you know. <laughs> You know, when oh, push yeah. comes to shove, shove and when you're deaf, it's desperate, you'll figure it out. But I got I know, a lot right? of help from <laughs> the art director and such. So and that's what I've been doing. I know. That's the, the thing. I feel like, I don't know, just from my um, still limited experience in children's book publishing, they're, everybody's willing to help, you know, like or, yeah. um, be really kind about uh I will say this is, I love people in the children's book industry. Um, they are exactly that. They are very helpful and uh, very willing to, you know, offer up any advice. It's a great industry yeah. to be in. Okay. So how's everybody feeling? Is everybody ready to start tying up their drawings? I think yeah. I'm done. I'm just okay, done well, I'm just stuff for just for fun now. I mean, you know, you can. <laughs> um, you just okay, so let's show. So here's mine. Spider-Man driving a car very uh, wrongly. I don't think you should drive a car like this, kids. <laughs> Once you start driving, I wouldn't do that. Um, okay, and then uh joe what about you you have a similar one to me <laughs> yeah yeah i guess so it just seems like spider-man uh should be out on top of the roof of the car or at least jumping onto a car actually, yeah it, that, actually, i didn't see why why is he driving a car he got his web <laughs> yeah, right, right. somebody else uh, is if, driving the car and they look scared but yeah. <laughs> nice oh carolyn so what were yours again Okay, so the thing is, I'm not, I mean, Spider-Man is not a, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not really, a, I wouldn't even, I don't think I would, I don't want to draw Spider-Man. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, I really do like, I, ha I'm a, I have a book that, uh, it's not out yet, but it's, it's called, um, it's called Aaron, the elephant, uh, Aaron, the elephant fits in, and he's got a, um, a spider mother and a um, uh, elephant father. And so he's got like the eight, the eight arms, right? And but everybody, he's really shy. So all of the other people in the studio, all of my other characters, are constantly using him to hang things on, like, like they're like, because he wants to be part. He's like, can I be in the book? And they're like, sure. <laughs> and they just hang like flashlights on him and lights and you know, towels and stuff. And he's basically abused, you know. So, oh, so that's kind of what mine is. He's uh, here, and you can see all the other. I'm drawing over here, and you can see all the other characters 
you know, just taking advantage of his, uh, you know, limbs, basically. So yeah, I, I, my, like your, my <laughs> I like how you came up with the whole story. You got to write this down. Yeah, <laughs> Make a dummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I love dummies. There you go. Oh, and Pablo, what did you draw? Uh, I, I went also with the same thing. Ah. On top of the car. Uh, a surprisingly sad car. I don't know why. I mean, I know why. If you're getting if you're getting jumped on, it, yeah. I would be sad too. Yeah, uh, I know. I've also right? drawn this. I've drawn this guy so many times. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, so good. Um, oh, okay, so we have a uh, some a lot of student prompts, but I'm gonna go with this one because it's definitely speaking to me. Um, uh, a pickle with a mustache. Pickle with a mustache. Okay. All right. Let's, so let's get started pickle. with those pickles. Those very professional pickles. Okay. So, and my next question was going to be, what? is the hardest thing you've had to draw for a book. Okay, I'll start off with you, Pablo. Oof. Um, I know, tough, right? <laughs> you know what's funny is that I started out as a, as a background designer. So I love everything that has to do with more background stuff, but characters are so hard for me. And mm. you know, as as you know, characters need to exist in stories. Uh, so that's always been pretty hard. Uh, I I developed a style where it makes me draw, forced me to draw characters in, stylized, but it's still fun. But when I started the uh, during comics, that was so hard. I would just spend a lot of time just building the world, and I would be like, oh, I have to draw people here. Uh, oh, I know. It's uh, Yeah, it's like uh, you have to be telling like a story with each character, and then the characters sort of have to contrast. And then um, it's, yeah, it's definitely uh, bringing a whole new element to it. I guess, well, let's see, the hardest thing, I'm trying to think, what's the hardest thing I've had to draw? You know, I've actually, for uh, a new book coming out next year, I had to draw like a lot of succulents, like a lot of succulent plants. And I, I'm i not really into backgrounds as much. I'm more character actually focused. And so that was actually a big learning experience for me and also, <laughs> What's even funnier is I'm not a fan of succulents. I feel like everybody's a fan of succulents now, except for me. <laughs> I just like, I just like flowers, I guess. But uh, so that was actually a hard thing for me to draw, but it's been good and, and they're happy with the succulents. In fact, they want me to draw another book with more succulents. <laughs> That's what happens always. If you draw something good, then they're gonna want more. <laughs> oh, so Joe, what yeah. about you? Uh, well, characters what was the hardest are thing? People, people doing things is just the hardest thing to draw, I think. But, um, and I once had to do a parade uh, scene. And I, I think I did a Cesar Chavez book with marches with a whole bunch of people. So pe that was people at exponential levels or whatever. So <laughs> that was just like a marathon. Um, because, you know, each character needed its own look and whatever, I think. So that's a lot. Drawing a cast of thousands is rough. Oh, my um, gosh. That is super yeah. rough. And I would say just making characters look like individuals and things is really challenging. So so they have life and vibrancy and all that. That's always, that's always, uh, uh, but that's what, you know, that's what makes your story come alive. If you can come up with a decent characters. And that's relatively new. I think for me, because most of my earlier books, though they had characters, were not necessarily character driven. So um, I think now that I'm writing more, I, maybe I think about that a little bit more than I did before. No, I could definitely understand thinking of that more now. 
yeah, when you, yeah, when you write, it just adds, uh, it's like, I don't know, when I, when I write and draw books now, it's just like, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth right. now. Oh, so Carolyn, what about you? What's the hardest thing you've had to draw for a book? Um, wow. I, and and um, the hardest thing I had to draw was something that I hadn't really seen. And that was for a book, but I loved, I loved uh, working on it. It was called a um, Surprise for Teresita. And the thing is, uh, I was drawing um, uh, the city, um, you know, uh, with these fire hydrants when the kids are playing in the fire hydrants uh, there in, in, uh, in New York. And, and um, I, I really wanted to see the buildings because I wanted the buildings to be like a character. Like almost you walk into the book. Uh, let, me, let me move over here. So you kind of walk into the book and it opens up as the building and you see the kids playing in the, in the water and everything. And I love the book. I have it here right over there. But the thing is, it was really hard because I don't like to just kind of look at photographs and to get an idea. I wanted to go there and I did go to New York, but it was snowing. And so there's just no way to get that kind of a feel. And so it was the hardest thing I had to draw, but it was, it was really, really fun. You know, it's always fun when you're drawing kids, right? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I can, I oh. love drawing kids. Oh man, so is everybody ready with their pickles? Wow, look at all these good pickles. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Carolyn, now you go first. Mine is always, mine is always just story, right? So I have the, uh, I can put the green in, but you started talking about succulents, so I started adding cactus. But, but here, here's my pickle, and he's got a mustache, and he's pleading with the person about to eat them. Uh. The pickle. And he's, it says upside down, please stop. Respect your food. Oh. <laughs> oh man, what about you, Joe? It looks like your pickle's winning a race. Um, it's you know it's college football season and ah. <laughs> baseball playoffs and everything, so it's a pickle racing to get a seat at the game or something. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you and my husband Fans. would be good friends, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pablo, what about you? Um, it's a rich pickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those rich pickles. Ugh. What what's he rich from? <laughs> it didn't look too rich actually. Is his hat like broken? Yeah, it's a can. <laughs> it's an open can. Yeah, he's he's, he's he's a fake he's a fake rich. Yeah. <laughs> Just lost his fortune. So to see me. And then my pickle is a happy birthday pickle. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Just who you want bring out your birthday cake, All a right. big pickle. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I think we might have time for one more quick prompt. Okay, so let me see. What would be, <laughs> let's see. Oh, the moon or sun as a person? The moon or sun as a person. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. wonderful. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's great because you can say. I know. I'm really putting our we're putting our character making skills to the test this morning. <laughs> or so let's see. I'm gonna do let me see. Oh, yeah. So I think a lot of kids would love to hear. So what tools do you use when you draw? And I'll, I'll go off first with this one, actually, is um, so when I draw, I actually use um, like pencils always. And I'm just more comfortable because of the size of the paper. Um, just to start off, because I just the way I draw is like very very full arm and it's hard for me with drawing on a computer screen but a lot of time when I get that initial sketch I'll bring it into the computer and then I'll uh, do editing from there but then I actually print it out again and then do it on paper because I just love the line quality and let's see and then with my picture books I actually paint them all but uh, and I use a mixture of paint and watercolors and um, pencils and inks actually, uh, cause I'm very multimedia with my painting. Um, but I'm very smart with my editing and that I do it on the computer <laughs> cause it's so much easier than repainting an entire painting. 
that's for sure. If you have to change some colors or anything. Um, but I love it. I've, I've been really happy with that method. Okay. And then Carolyn, what about you? Um, I am really, I started off as an oil painter. So I use, um, oil on cardboard and I developed a process which enables it to, to dry in 45 minutes so you can scan it. And what it actually does is it just seals it. I mean, the, the oil, you, most people don't realize, but oil takes sometimes a year to dry or, you know, six months. And so it's wet on the inside, but, but you can actually, uh, scan it in because it's um it's got this um uh, just it's sealed in and uh so i love 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 oil but i also really love watercolor and uh, i'm a mm. traditional i mean i do everything in traditional um uh, i draw as a matter of fact even my book my novel is completely in in a uh, quill pen and uh some special paper because i use nothing but ink so i absolutely love like i said marks I like to, when I read stuff in the 1500s or earlier, I love to see the actual writing because it actually tells you a lot more than just the words, you know? So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, a real, real, I'm really big on, um, on real paper and real, and, and, and the best part, if you make your own pencils and brushes and pens and, and, and uh, paint. So there you go. That's what I use. Oh, awesome. And uh, Pablo, what about you? Um, when I started making comics, I was really gung-ho about making it ink, ink wash. Uh, but I, I'm really, nowadays, I'm just, I do everything digital now. I have an, I, I got an iPad and I do like 90% of the work there. Um, I just feel way more comfortable. And also like, I know I can make, I'll make a lot of mistakes and, uh, I uh, just let the mistakes die there. So. No, definitely. I like that. Uh, oh, and Joe, what are tools do you use? Um, well, I I use whatever the book needs to be done. You know, if it's, <laughs> if I feel the book needs to be painted traditionally, I'll paint it traditionally. If it feels like it needs another kind of look, and digitally is the best method, then that's what I'll do. Um, uh, so the story tells me what it wants, and but I I am largely an oil painter. Uh, most of my books uh, have been, especially the earlier books. Well, now I switch back and forth. Earlier on, I did most. I worked mostly in oils, but I draw. Uh, initially, I drew traditionally with pencil and stuff, but now all the preliminary work, drawing and dummy and all that, I do digitally. It's just simpler. I mean, it's just easier to just fix things, move things around and all of that. So I draw a lot digitally when it comes to designing, but uh, I, ideating and coming up with stuff is usually a sketchbook that I take with me when I have breakfast or something like that. That's where ideas kind of come in or, you know, oh. just noodling. That yeah. seems to work in a sketchbook pretty well. And I wasn't always a sketchbook guy, um, but you know, you sort of adapt to your living circumstances and life changes and stuff like that. So now I'm a sketchbook guy. Not as much as a lot of other people, but I am. Because maybe because I'm writing more. That's probably why. Yeah. No, I definitely, because I feel like I have to carry a sketchbook around because yeah. suddenly an idea will come to me. Right. And I'll, I'm trying to remember it. That's not going to, yeah. <laughs> that's not right. going to happen. Exactly. With, especially with my kids with me. They're going to help yeah. me remember what kind of snack they want, but <laughs> not my go. book idea. Um, oh, and so now we have some actual student questions. All right. Um, so Rachel? What's the process that you go through to illustrate a book? Oh, I couldn't hear the sound. Oh, here it is. Yeah. What process do you go through to illustrate a book? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So um, was it uh, Carolyn? What do you think? What's the process you go through? I, I come from music. I used to be a rock musician, a, 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 not just a garage one. That was my, that was what I did my living. So the thing is, um, as a composer, I always come at it from a musical standpoint. You've got the 16 spreads, which is very much like a 16 um, beat turnaround in a, in a song. And so to me, it's really important how a book sounds. If it's, I mean, if unless I, if I've written it, you know, it, it kind of feels like a song, and and I and I keep, you know, playing it over and over again. But if it's someone else's work, someone else's words, 
I, 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 I start to live in that world, you know? And there's one thing that I do and I use more than any other tool imaginable, and it is Play-Doh. I make all my characters out of Play-Doh. Every single what? one. Oh my God. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you I have to be able this. to interact with them, right? And so they kind of come to life. I've got tons of this stuff, tons. It is so heavy, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, here you go. There you go. So, uh, and then I, I do sit down and I try to make sure that the book comes full circle, that that it's it's just kind of like the foundation to the words. And they and it, it's just a, so, 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 Doing a book is all about, in my mind, it's all about pacing and living in that world, you know? Yeah, and no, definitely. It's out of your fingers if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're there, I think. Yeah. What about you, Pablo? Uh, if I'm drawing for someone else, if it's somebody else's book, I, you know, I receive the script, I look at it, I, I kind of glance at it, I put it aside, I sit on it for like days, um, and then the last two days that I need to turn in, I frantically read it and uh, <laughs> and just go through it and throw a bunch of ideas and sketches. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, sometimes I do that. Um, <laughs> I so so it's it's fairly straightforward. Like I, I I just do a bunch of concepts first, and then once they send me like a full script of uh, pages, I just start. Uh, thumbnailing. Uh, my thumbnails are fairly detailed, so, but you know, because I do it digitally, it's it's easier, it's easier for me to change anything. Um, and then we start jumping into cleaning color. I I do tend to jump straight to color though. That's that's one thing that uh, I I prefer working straight to color. If it's mm. for me for my my books, I I write. Uh, a whole like overview of everything I want. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to be like very straightforward with their writing. Like they're just like type everything out. Uh, I need a plan. I need to know where everything is going first, even if it's just like smaller paragraphs. Oh um, yeah, no, I totally know. What about you, Joe? Um, well, I, some similarities and some something different than uh, Pablo and Carolyn. Similarly, um, uh well when i get a manuscript um someone else's manuscript um usually it, all i need is one read um to know if i want to illustrate it or not because if i'm reading it over and over again then it may be my it might be that i'm not reacting to the book in a you know like an emotional way right off the mm -hmm. bat so um one of the first most important processes Part of the process for me is that first phone call I have with the editor who sent me the manuscript, because at that point I am uh, trying to find out if the editor um, or I am sharing my response um, to the story and what I think the core of the story is primarily, and I'm and I'm looking to share that with the editor and so that we can be, uh, pardon the the pun, the same page um, with that because if we have a good uh, feeling similarly about the book, then I think the collaborative process is going to be strong. So once I know the core of this, once I feel feel strongly about that and I say yes to the gig, then I start sort of working through the manuscript and I let the manuscript kind of tell me what it wants and needs other than those first initial reactions. Like what I have this question that I always ask, which is kind of a weird question, but it probably comes from my science my years ago experience of science is how much does the book exist in gravity for that what that means for me is is the book sort of a poem and it's just sort of abstract mm -hmm. or is it a linear story that goes from plan you know point a to point b so right away that tells me where i'm going to live pictorially and you know whether the picture the, the color is going to be some one way or another way um i though I spend a lot of time once I'm working, composing each picture, you know, at the thumbnail and level that to me, that's where the work gets done at the drawing stage and making sound beautiful pictures. Because if I do that well, mm -hmm. then at the end, which is different maybe than the way Pablo works uh, is where I want to work with color in a spontaneous way. 
because if if I've got it all planned out, which I really try to, to mm -hmm. do, make it sound, then executing at the end could be just like really hard, not so interesting work if everything is planned. No, then I'm I can just totally. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like coloring in a coloring book. Yeah, or whatever. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? So I want no, to have exactly. something for the end. So no, totally. planning, then sort of performing. And yeah, color is the performance area. So that's yeah, how it yeah, works yeah. for me. No, no, I meant, I meant the, for me. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, sorry to rush, but we have uh, one, more one more student, student or two more student questions, question. actually. Yeah. Hi, my name is Charlotte, and I'm from Bangkok Patina School, and I have a question. How do you design your book characters? Oh, mm. I have. I, 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 <laughs> so how do you design your book characters? So we'll have to go through this pretty fast. But uh, um, so uh, Pablo, how do you design your book characters? I guess if you say in a sentence. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> right? um, With our time. <laughs> um, as as readable as possible, everything needs to read. Every silhouette needs to read clear for me. That's that is. So silhouette first, and then everything inside after. No, totally. And then uh, what about you, Carolyn? OK, so um, I, I already, everybody knows I use Play-Doh, and I, I do it all the time <laughs> on YouTube. But the thing is, I wanted to show my son in my, my moon. Because you didn't have, mm. OK, so my son in my moon, uh, I, the, the book I'm doing is about Mexico, Tenochtitlan, which was oh. a city made on an island, and they had already done this. The sun and the moon were actually pyramids, and those are my sun and moon. That's what I'm trying oh, to Oh, awesome. About. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, what about you, Joe? How do you design a character? Um, well, you know, uh, the thing Pablo just mentioned was something I just learned not that long ago, but animators know that really well about the silhouette thing. And I, you know, I never really never knew about that but it makes it once you start real realizing that it makes so much sense so now i think about that in some of the characters <laughs> that illustrate. but you know i love invention um so the manuscript a lot of times does not have elements um uh, describing the characters so i really try and uh, extrapolate something uh and invent something in addition to whatever the the, the story says it may not say something about the hair, it may not say something about a character's attitude or something like that, but I live sort of uh, infusing characters in that. But character development is, is something new for me that I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, it's, you know, it's one of the hardest parts for me in a book is actually the character development. Like I spend a lot of time because it almost feels, mm -hmm. well, it feels like you're giving birth. Right. Uh -huh. for me is, <laughs> it's just like yeah. you're creating this person and you become yeah. to really care about them and yeah. then you want the author to care as well mm -hmm. about and love it just as much as you do and also you want to be happy with it so you're happy with drawing it again and again and again and again because you don't definitely don't want to draw something that you're like looking at and you're like why didn't I draw it this way and so it's when you get it it's just yeah mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I guess let's move on. We have another student question. Hi, my name is Ari. Do you have any advice on how to get better at drawing? Do you have any advice on how to get better at drawing? Ooh, I always love this one. Uh, Joe, why don't you go? Well, when I speak at schools, I always end it with this one saying, um, to get one good drawing, you got to do about a hundred bad ones. So you might as well get the bad ones out of the way. It's just draw, draw, draw. And uh, also let me say thank you to Sarah, Charlotte, and now Ari for the questions. Those are great questions. Oh yeah. Oh, thanks for mentioning that, Joe. Uh, Carolyn, what about you? You know, I, I've spent, I spent the last three days with Rosemary Wells and I absolutely love her, um, her books, her, her, uh, the Max and Ruby books. And I got to tell you, she said something uh, yesterday that really, really blew my mind because I think innately it is what I always have believed in music and in writing and, and in, in art. When you're drawing something, you kind of, you're, you're feeling that emotion yourself, you're, you're, 
you're kind of making that expression yourself. And if you're if you're really there, it'll just flow out of your fingers and actually kind of just get on the paper. You know what I mean? You want to get to the point where you're not thinking about it, where you're getting your ideas there and not being so you know careful about it. I think that that was that really kind of sums it up for me because I, I went through that that stage where I drew everything. So I mean, everything had to be just the perfect shadowing and the perfect and you do you do all those motion drawings and uh, I they're not as fun for me. I really like communicating through picture and, and and that silhouette thing is really really important you should be able to see something on a stamp sit back and know what it is so so that that the idea that you can communicate something very quickly that that means a lot to me so if you're gonna learn how to draw i would say draw a lot and have fun you know yeah and then what about you pablo uh i think it's a combination of both what joe and caroline said uh you gotta draw a lot of bad drawings first, so <laughs> it's just it's just a game of getting all the bad ones out, but also having so fun. True. And I think and I think that uh, there's a there's these like how to draw manga books that you know a lot of us we tend to kind of look down on them, but you know they are they made they were made for kids to learn how to draw basic things, and they when you know they do the job so that that works out i feel like like those are really good uh options because you know when you give someone a a really thick book about drawing like a uh or a thick anatomy book it's like a, to a kid it's just not gonna work out like they're gonna be mm -hmm. like yeah i don't want to do this this is <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> I know. I think those really simple um, drawing books are the best to start out with, yeah. actually, because yeah. you, you you feel really good. Like, that's the thing. You don't want right. to already start feeling bad about how you're drawing when you started out doing it for the joy of it. Right. And I, yeah. I wanted to say I, everybody said great stuff. But one of the big things for me is warming up, you know, like because it's like exercise. It's like yeah. just scribble, just scribble on right. the page and like get all those because otherwise you start out so tight, you know, yeah. and then, and, and, and it and it comes across in your line already as yeah. well. Um, oh, one last question. How do the illustrators imagine how the characters look? Hmm, so Carolyn, what do you think? Well, you know, I'm crazy. I mean, I talk to them all the time. I mean, so I guess I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even a stretch. You know, you mean, here's the fish right here. But okay, how do I do it? Right here. I have, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and I know that's not what you look at now, but this time, I have them, I make, I make little, uh, I make the, the worlds, you know, so mm. I'm playing with them, and, uh, and I'm talking to them while I'm working, and, and uh, there you go, that's mine. Oh, man, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you? Uh, what about you, Pablo? Um, oof. So, I mean, I normally work with descriptions. Somebody needs to give me some, some kind of like prompt or something that I can work off of. Um, but otherwise, uh, I'm. Otherwise, it's mostly just from references. A lot of times, to be fair. I feel like I'm mostly just drawing myself with just different outfits. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna like read all your books, Pablo. <laughs> I want to see you in all the different outfits. <laughs> oh man, and what about you, Joe? Um, well, I think Pablo is right. I think most of our drawings have a whole uh, autobiographical <laughs> aspect to them, so that's true. But um, without being too philosophical, um, I think in, what when I talk to kids too, um, uh, although I'm a, f a fan of pure invention and I usually start from that place first, I don't really like to go to reference or anything. I just like to invent, but that, what that requires, what I say is an illustrator, uh, uses what they know and what they see and they put it mm -hmm. together. And what you know might be like those kids, uh, how to learn kids books, or it be means being engaged in the world and being an observer of the world and open to every kind of stimuli um, and then putting what you know together with what you see um, by getting your chops together by uh, 
uh, engaged, being engaged with the world uh, lets lets you make an authentic mark. So um, that's where I think inventiveness comes from, whether it's a character, whether it's a background or whatever. So thank you, Cecilia, for the great question. Oh, thank you for that, Joe. That was a really nice note to end on. And um, I just want to close up. Uh, so thank you, teachers, students, librarians, everybody who came to attend the draw panel. At, I had to have it fall out one more time. <laughs> at the Latinx Kidlit Book Festival. Um, and it's been great talking to you all this morning. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Likewise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, teachers. <laughs> you guys still there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, hi. That was wonderful. Thank you, Eliza. <laughs>